right. All right, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Um, we are going to get started in just a minute with this uh, new dot mandala. I call this one black box, but that's only because the box is, you know, black. Um, you could do the box in different colors, but I'm just f I'm futzing with the lighting to get you guys the clearest picture. Let's see. Uh, we're going to shine. I can't help that. Okay. I'll just keep that in mind as I move forward. Uh, let's see what we got here. Good. Here we go. Whoops. I said here we go, but then I just lost my live feed. So was that just annoying? There it is. Okay. So, oh, that's not really super bright for you, is it? Let me get us. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Wow, that is quite the little shine, isn't it? I'm not used to that. I'm in a different room than I usually am. Let me see if I can. Who where that shine might? No, that's me. That shine is definitely my lighting. Okay. Sorry. I normally would. No, it's just life is giving it that shine. Hmm. Oh, but you know what? It's going to be a non-issue. <laughs> silly me when I take it away. So, oh my gosh, you would think I would be able to figure these things out by now, but I'm just having one of those days. Okay, there we go. No shine. How do we get rid of the shine? We remove the shiny object. Yep, look what you're in for today. Okay, woot woot. So, here we go. Um, this is our box top. You've got, we're not, we're only going to do what, deal with the box top right now. Um, then you have, it's got your center marking and then it has your rays. Obviously it's um, symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter where, you know, where, what direction you go in. You have your tool. Okay. So this is our eight pointed tool. Starts with tip number one. Um, which is going to be the smallest tip, and it goes all the way around to tip number eight. The numbers are right on them here. So I will refer to them by their number. We're going to use tip one, and then you have your six colors. And um, on your, so you're, that you have in order that we're going to use them. And I think that I'm going to use. The first color is a, a jade green. The second one's a teal. And then we have, um, actually they're both teal, aren't they? We have a teal green and a teal blue, but um, I think the second one I would call, the third one you'll use, I would call a bright blue. And then we have a light blue, a dark blue, and an antique white. So I mentioned that to you so that I can, it's good to try to keep them in, you know, well, you have them in order, so that will really help. Um, and then you've got your damp paper towel for cleaning off your um, your tips in between each color. So we're going to get started, and we're going to start, as we often do, with tip eight. And we're going to use the first color, color A, um, that, that uh, jade I talked about, jade green. It's kind of a blue, really, when it gets fired. But anyway, um, we're going to put that right on that center dot. Oh, I got all right, so one nice, and then clean off your tip. All right, so it's a dip and dot. We often go through a practice, but this one starts off slow, so it's not quite um, as big of a concern. Now, the next thing I'm gonna want you to do is we're actually gonna go out right to, I'm gonna use, do I have a, yes, here's a pencil here for pointing. Um, we're going to go to the end of the ray next. We're actually going to do this row of dots, and then we're going to come back inside after that. All right, so we're going to use tip number three. I'm actually going to skip over that bright, that uh, teal green color, even though I said I put them in order. I've changed my mind. I know the, you, those of you who work with me a lot are laughing. I can handle it. So we're going to use tip three, and we're going to go to your third color, that, that uh, bright blue, all right? And we're going to just put one tip three dot on the edge of each of those 
raise. Now, I want you to do it carefully because I ideally would like for their dots not to run into each other. So better to start a little small if you have to. You can always make them bigger. You can't make them smaller, life itself. So go a little smaller if you need to. You know, the other thing is, in terms of the shape of them, they tend to shape themselves back out into circles in the kiln. So don't worry if it's a little funky shaped. Um, okay, but that's what that step's going to look like. All right, so that was with tip three. And then we're going to go back to that teal green blue color, the, that really bright color, um, or dark color, I should say. And we're going to actually use tip one for that. Okay, and we're just going to put that one in between. I always use the word triangulate because I like it. Um, in, inside... Okay, no, that's not a dot, Jackie. Okay, inside, and I'm gonna use my pencil to point again, in between the two dots. So it kind of makes, if you think of these as eyes, it makes a nose. Yep, you're welcome. Now you'll never be able to see it again. So you wanna do that between every one. Sometimes, yeah, that's just the easiest thing. You can just do every one. And you wanna do these small too, because you can run out of room. Now, let me tell you, it doesn't matter like mine, I ended up doing too big, so I am not gonna be able to align them as noses the way I normally would. It doesn't matter, it just matters that I put one all the way around. So if I end up with seven and, well, be 11 instead of 12, it doesn't matter as long as I'm making an effort to make them, see, I have one less than I should, but if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. All right, so that's our next step. All right. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to go to tip five and we're going to go back to our first color, that light um, jade green. And on every other um, ray, we're going to do that and we're gonna not start, that's how I like, how do I describe this? We're going to uh, n not do it on the corner ray. So pick a not corner ray and put that on there, okay? And then skip one, I guess actually it doesn't, if you, let's see, it will end up on a corner ray. Isn't that interesting? I worry too much, that's my problem, okay. So I'm gonna come out this way. So it doesn't really matter because it will hit, a, every other one will be a corner ray. Do math, Jack, do math. Okay, looking at my own design going, yep, that's how it works. All right, so every other one. And then in between, we're going to use um, that third color again, okay? The, the blue that we just used underneath you know, that we're going above. I'm actually gonna make this one, we're gonna do the same thing with tip three. No, tip five, sorry. Mind like a sieve. Tip five, that bright blue in between. Okay? On the, on the remaining rays, if you will. Yes, I brought my trusty banding wheel home. You know, somebody asked me, you know, can I order one? And I'm like, of course, I will order one for you. But then I found out they're really kind of pricey. So <laughs> I can order one for you if you want. But just be aware, much to my surprise. All right, so when you have that done, thank you guys. Um, we're going to go, we're just going to make what I call a crown. So above the lighter colored um, dot, we're going to do five small dots with the off-white, the last color. Okay, so I guess I did never, so above those, we're going to do one in the middle and then two on the side. Okay, 
So it's going to be one in the middle, two on the sides. One in the middle, and if you get a lot on there, always dot lightly, because you can always dot again if you have to, but you can't take it back if you put too much paint on it. All right. Do you have any questions? Just use the comments. All right, I'm, I'm reading, filming with one device and watching you with the other. That's right, you didn't know that, right? All right, that's a crown, so-called, because I named it that. So I know that April is waiting for this, so I'm gonna talk now about why sometimes when you dot with the same color, or with the same tip, but different colors, they come out different sizes. And what's the reason for that? That's right, viscosity. Different glazes have different thicknesses, if you will. And so I'm always very tentative when I first dot with a color. I can get bold after that, but I like to start off safe. Um, and then get a sense of, of how it spreads, if you will. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is use tip number seven, and we're gonna go back to that, uh, that teal green or that the second color, that bright green color, and we're gonna put a dot on the other ray, okay, in between what we just did. So one important looking dot right there. Yes, that's actually a, I guess, a term of measurement, important looking. My world, okay. Now we've done tear dropping quite a bit, you know, which is where we're gonna go around that dot that we just put down there with different colors. This one's a little bit different in that we're actually tear dropping with multiple colors. So the first level of teardrop is going to be just like the crown, it's gonna be tip one and then that off white and we're going to go all the way around it and the way that we do that is we start at the top with a dot and then we come down one side. You can re-dip if you need to. Um, just remember that when you re-dip, you wanna be, uh, careful about it. With tip one, there's nothing really, you know, it's the smallest tip that there is. But remember, when you dip, you're essentially going to get the same size dot as your first dot. And we don't want that over here. We want a slightly smaller dot. So you want to, the way you can control that is by dotting lightly. Sometimes I'll do this and do them on both sides simultaneously so that I don't have that same issue. Okay. And then sometimes I just throw caution to the wind and going, I can cope. All right, so we're tear dropping all around with tip number one. And the off-white color. Which is as close as we come on here to a color that's gonna look like, look, when it dry, when it's fired, I should say, looks similar to what it looks like when it's wet here. So that's, you're gonna go around each of those with that off-white color. But then what we're going to do after that, yes, wait, there's more. Um, we're gonna actually go up to tip two and use the same color, but we're only gonna put a crown of three dots above that, okay? So we're just gonna do one, two, three, okay? And then after that, we're going to switch to tip one, back to tip one, and we're going to use that third color um, again, that uh, medium, what, what do they call it, teal blue, and finish it up. Tip one, yeah, I'm making sure I'm, okay.
All right, so we're gonna, you can now, you can, if you want to, you can do all of your tip two crowns first if you want to. One, two, three, and turn, okay? Some people find that easier, frankly. I, I find that easier because I'm not having to switch tips. It's also a little bit neater because otherwise I tend to tuck the tool, when I turn the tool and it has glaze on it, I tuck it into my hand. And I get glaze all over my hand, which I don't really care, but I'm just telling you. So then I'm gonna now, after I finished all of my tip two antique white crowns, I'm going to my tip one with that lighter tip teal blue and I'm gonna finish off my teardrops, all my teardrops. Often, as I've said, a lot of people wanna know well, how many dots are on the teardrop. And you know, I gotta be honest, it really depends more on you, it depends on your shape of your teardrop, how close or far together you put them. What matters is just that, whoops, I did that one wrong, is that you do them um, they don't even have to be somewhat similar. They just have to be in the same position. So there can be that you end up in some cases with four on one side and five on the other, or in my case, three or something like that. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go grab a brush because I need to tidy up my little mess here. Now, I always tell you guys, don't clean it up until it's done. And usually, that's true, unless, you know, you're teaching and then it doesn't work quite so well. So I guess actually all I did was these three should have been white. I just missed one and then I went and did the whole thing in the blue. So I'm also probably more experienced than the average bear at uh, cleaning them up. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I can tidy it up some more later. So ignore my mess. So that's what you've got. You have your second teardrop that had the crown and then the rest of it in that um, blue. Now we're going to actually go up to tip three for our crown. So we're going to crown again, okay? One, two, three, above each crown that we've done. One, two, three. I'm actually going to now be able to fix the one from before. And one, two, three. Okay. And then we're going to use the, the same color, the uh, dark green teal, the one that we use for the giant dots. We're gonna use that um, with tip three the rest of the way around. So we are actually gonna stick with the same tip size, tip three, because you have kind of a ways to go here. All right, so on mine, for example, I have four dots. But like I said before, there's no right answer on the number of dots you might have. And this one basically comes pretty close to landing on those some of those lines if that helps you oh my god I did it again I really don't know that I can talk and chew gum today or talk and paint today you ever have one of those days of course we all do I feel like Mr. Rogers ah <laughs> oh, such a soft voice so calming Yes, it's a hard day, but it'll be okay. I'm sure there's a song I should break out into, but I don't know it. Also, I can guarantee you, you don't wanna hear me sing. All right, yeah, my voice is very gravelly today. Sorry about that. Okay, for you have to listen to me. So we're doing tip three, that uh, dark jade green color, second one in your set. Okay, and that's what that'll look like. See if I can get you looking at it at least so it's 
starting to make a little bit more sense. All right, and now we're gonna do a little bit of double dotting, okay, because some of our stuff in the center has, well, we're just gonna actually just double dot the center because that's all, yeah, for right now, that's dry. So let's go back and use tip six with that um, off-white color and put a second dot on top of that center, okay? Now, you don't want it to be too domed up, so if you have a very domey one, you can tap, tap very lightly and pull some of that off and wipe it on your towel. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this rounded flower look a little bit more um, star-like, if you will, for the moment. We're gonna use tip five. We're gonna go on to our next color, which is that light blue. It should be your fourth color. And we're going to make a uh, we're going to make a triangle. The way that I do that is I'm actually going to do the two side in the tip five, okay, on either side. And then I'm actually going to go up to tip six to make the top one. Whoops. Okay. So I'm using tip five to make my two bottom posts, if you will. And then go up to tip six to make the top one. So that way the top one pops out a little bit more. You wanna to try to make those two side ones somewhat equal-ish. Another Jackie measurement, equal-ish. Well, some of this is not gonna fit on here. Hmm. I'm going to need to punt at the end of this one. I can see it already because I turned the design and as a result of doing that, need to make some changes. All right, so we've got that. And I'm gonna let you guys finish that one up. Yeah, see, it's fun, isn't it? How it turns it from looking like a flower into a star. Yeah, I don't get out much. Okay, I think it's beautiful. All right, so now we're gonna go, <clears throat> excuse me, with tip five again, and we're gonna go back to that off-white color, and we're going to put a dot, I'll show you, in between each star point down, pretty close in, but just not so close that you're gonna hit anything. All right, so we can come way down here, but not, like I said, probably around your second or third dot. And just right smack in the middle. Should somewhat pretty much align with a ray. But trust me, that's not the hill to die on if it doesn't. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna use tip three and go back to our first color. And we're going to do a um, dot, dot, dot from our new triangle down to our new dot. What do I mean by that? All right, we're gonna start from this bottom, it's not a leg, I guess we'll call it point. And we're just going to dot, 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 dot down to there. And we're gonna do that on every one of them. All right, now remember you always dot better. Everybody, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, dots better from one side or the other. So the best thing to do is to move your piece so that you're always dotting from your side of strength. So I am lucky enough to have a turntable, but you have that placemat you can use to lift up your piece. If your hands are clean, well, I've used two different colors here, oh well having a tough day. Okay, we've covered that already. Um, and just make sure you're turning. I'm left-handed, so I always dot on the left side. Okay. So I turn it so that I, you know, it just, to be honest, and you can imagine how important this is based on how many mistakes I'm making today, um, it helps keep my hand 
out of the glaze, which is tray important. Okay, so using tip three and that first color, we're dotting down. Okay, now I did say that I already noticed I did what? What did I do? I did this one in the blue. This was a big mess to clean up. This might not clean up nicely. Do not watch this part. Keep up your own. <laughs> watch your own stuff. I'm just teasing. I think it's good that I show you that I make mistakes, right? I don't know. That's this, my story and I'm sticking with it. Okay, fixed. Once it dries, I can clean it up a little bit more, but at least I have the right color on there now. That's like a huge step in the right direction. Okay. So we're gonna do a little bit of double dotting now. All right, so we're going to use, we're gonna start with our tip two. We're gonna do that one. And we're going to use that bright dark blue that we haven't used yet. And we're gonna put that on these large um, on, no, I don't call it the large ones because that's going to confuse you. So don't ignore that word. Er, take it out of your mind. So we have the center using pencil, center, and then this row, and then this row, and then we have the dots that are every other color. Every other one's a different color. That's the row we're going to work on now. So we're going to put the dark blue on the darker of those, just a little size two dark blue dot every other one. Let's see if I can manage to pull that off today, huh? Okay, and I did it. It's a big, big day for me. And then we're gonna go in between those, we're gonna use the same tip, tip two, and we're gonna use that off-white on the other one. What I like about double dotting is that it gives um, a little bit more complexity to the design. It just makes, can make it pop a bit more. And then we're gonna come out to that other uh, dark green, teal green, big dot beyond it. All right, and we're gonna double dot with the um, light jade green, the first color, using tip three on that one. So on this one, we're gonna do a tip three dot. And that's obviously on every one of them. Oh my gosh, Jackie, pay attention. It's funny, all, I have, of all the six of those dots that I have, Five of them are bone dry and one of them is pretty wet. So if it's wet, don't press too hard. Just let the paint, the wet paint will basically suck your new glaze into it. And that's all good. All right. Then we're gonna pop up <clears throat> and to double dot on these big off white dots that we have. All right, and we're gonna use tip number two. And we're going to use the third color. So tip two and that kind of teal blue, the one that we did, um, that we did on our inside here. So it should be the third color. Also, as long as you don't use the same color for double dotting, 
it, it, you can, you know, change up the colors. My colors are not carved in a tablet somewhere. Thou shalt use them. You can change them if you want. Okay, so, oops, you can do a little bit more double dotting than that, make it a little bolder. But that's a good example of one where the, it's a little wet, so it just sort of sucked it in. And then we're gonna do the triangles. We're gonna also use tip two and we're gonna go for that bright blue color, that dark, 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 no, not bright blue, dark blue. I know I said I agree to what I'm gonna call them and then I change them. All right, so this triangle, we're gonna start with the top one and then do the two bottoms because that will suck up. The first one will take the most and then these are a little smaller. And then we're done with double dotting for the moment. What we're going to do now is above the uh, off-white dot that we double dotted, we're going to use tip number six, and we're going to use the... Uh, jade color, the first color, the jade green color, we're just gonna put one single dot above there. Okay. Okay. Now that, now what we're gonna do actually is take our number eight, our biggest one, <clears> our <throat> biggest tip, and we're gonna take the third color, that uh, teal blue, and we're gonna put a dot above the dot we just did. So just make sure you leave room for that dot to expand, because when you tap it down, it gets pretty big. Okay, and then we're gonna start with tip one. And we're gonna do a similar um, idea with the crowns and the rest of the teardrop as we've done before. So we're gonna start with tip one and put a little three-piece crown above that. And then we're gonna use the same tip, but we're gonna to switch to that light blue color for the rest of it. And it, for this one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it down to, let me show you, you're gonna take it down all the way to this large dot. Okay, so let me finish this one so you can see it. Let me do another one so you can see that. So there's my crown with my tip one and my antique white, and then I'm gonna use my tip one and my light blue, which has a thinner viscosity, so I wanna be a little bit lighter. And I'm just gonna take that down to the big dot. Okay, I think that was pretty. Now again, as I mentioned before, you can choose to do all your crowns first, if you prefer, and then do all of your light blue dots to finish the teardrop. This one's a little bit easier because it all uses the same tip size, but it does require you to clean off your dotting tool in between. It really isn't like a hard job or anything, so I guess it's not a big deal to do that. But if you've done a lot of these with me, it may be hard to remember to just do a crown. So that could be a problem. <clears throat> All right. So you've got, now we're gonna, oh, I'm gonna wait, sorry. This is the part where usually people are saying, Jackie, slow down. Okay. 
So now we're gonna use tip two and do the same thing, except we're obviously still gonna, not obviously, we're gonna do the crown in the same off-white color with tip two. Should be a little bit larger than tip one, there we go. But then we're going to do the rest with the first color, um, that jade green. So the crown is in the off-white and the rest is in the same tip in the jade green. This actually requires a little bit of concentration. I like that because the changing of the color is a little bit different. All right. So hard to really appreciate this before it gets fired. Um, you know, the changing of the color, but I really like how it looks out of the kiln. So just a reminder for those of you who are watching next week, which is the last week of July, if you happen to be watching this live or this week to do your box, is our Christmas in July week. Um, we do have a Christmas themed plate for next week. I don't have a picture of it here because I wasn't that organized, but we do. And then we also have a bunch of really cool pieces that um, you can order. They're all on our website. We have one, a cool truck, an old timey truck with a Christmas tree in the, um, in the back of it and the tree lights up. So that's really cool. That's um, been probably their most popular right now. Uh, we have a cute little elf mask, uh, elf ornament, sorry, that we painted a mask on. We thought that would be a good one for 2020. And uh, you can just copy our picture, go your own way, and you don't even have to put a mask on. We have all our uh, whole array of our ornaments on sale. And then our, our, you know, ceramic Christmas trees, we have a pretty good variety of sizes and styles. And all of those are on sale um, as well. And you can do them at home or you can do them in the studio. So when you order it, you just let us know whether you want to uh, come in and do it well, you can just come into the studio um, and do it. Or if you're ordering it online, we assume you want it to go. So if you don't, you should let us know. Because if you are thinking you want to do it, you probably do want to pre-order it. Because I know, for example, I already sold out of all the trucks with the trees that I had. I have more coming in tomorrow, so I'm not. it's not a concern. But um, yeah, pre-order is the way to go if there's something you really have your heart set on. All right, and then the last one we're gonna do is going to be in this series is gonna be the size three tip. And we're gonna do again with the crown, again with the crown, okay, again with the crown, with the three off white. And then we're going to use the dark blue color the rest of the way, also tip three. Okay. So tip three, off-white crown. And then the rest of the way with the dark blue, also tip three. Now, at this point, you know, whenever we get toward the end edge of, end of a design, and we start to reach the edges. Not everybody dots the same way. Not everybody has, you know, the same kind of a light hand or heavy hand. So some people, myself included, might be reaching the edge of their box on some of these and go, oh no, what do I do now? So I'm gonna show you that because that's this next one I have coming up. I don't really have enough, well, I do. I'm gonna, I can squeeze it in, but my point is if you didn't even have as much room as I do, you could just jump down to a number two on this one, but I can fit in my number three crown and that's what I'm gonna do, but that's gonna take me all the way to the edge. And you'll notice what I did was I picked up my piece for this because I don't want to create 
a um, slope going off the edge for my paint to run down. Yeah. So given that we're not professionals, sometimes our dotting can be different on different sides and that's okay. I've yet to see one that came out of the kiln where it really made a big difference because the beauty of the dot, the building the design with dots is that even though you feel it each dot at a time, when you're done, the accumulation of all the dots is what makes it spectacular. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> oh, look, I'm done with that step. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for you guys to finish that step. I obviously have done this before, so I hope I'm a little bit faster than you are. I feel like I'm crawling over here, so let me come back. Oh, well, if I come back, at least I need to stay in frame, right? I'm not good at remembering this is where it needs to be. Okay. When I look at it on my iPad in front of me, it's like reversed, and it always takes me a while to get caught up to that. Yeah, see, this is me not knowing that which direction it goes in. Ah, very good, Jack. All right, so now we're going to do some double dotting. Um, we're going to double dot on just the center. We're just gonna double dot that large center. So we're gonna use tip number six and we're going to use um, the dark, yep, dark blue color. Sorry, just making sure I'm true. And we're just gonna put a dot on here. Okay. I used to do all my double dotting at the end and frankly, if I'm just painting by myself, it's a fine way to do it, but it's really hard to give instruction on it. <laughs> you know, because you're just looking at a mass of dots and it's freaking you out. So I've taken to when we do these together to double dot. Now, just so you guys know, um, there's one more step to do to bring some of this design out to the edge. But I also have, if you remember, I'm gonna bring the sample up here. Um, we also have the corner design, okay, that we, you know, to finish the decoration bit of it. So, um, you have your choice. If you're like me, oh, sorry about the glare. Um, if you're like me and some, you've gone wide, okay, you might, because right now I would be adding something out here, and I'm going to because I'm doing a demo. But if you're like, oh, I don't want to risk going off the top, then you can stop right now. Okay, the design will be fine. And wait, and then we'll get to the corners. Or vice versa. If you're like, ah, eh, who cares about the corners? Then we can do the rest of this here, and you might not have corner pieces. Or you might just have two corner pieces. What do you mean, Jackie? Explain yourself. Okay, so let's get started. Um, all right, so we finished that. We finished our double dying. So now we're going to take our, um, we're going to work above our triangle over here. I'm going to choose this one because there's the most room to start with. And we're going to take our tip number eight and our jade green, that bright green blue, and put a dot right above there. All right, and we'll do that above each one of those. The other thing you can do is, if you're concerned about running out of room, you can do part of the design and not all of it. The only thing I would do is do the same thing all the way around. But I think this one, you can probably fit most of it in. And then after you do that, we're going to teardrop around it I think I'm going to just move us on to, we're going to teardrop, this is going to be, we're going to, yeah, I'm going to finish the sentence here. We're going to actually teardrop around it with tip number three. And we're going to use the, um, that light blue color. If you don't have a lot of room, you can easily downsize this to tip number two. In fact, I'm gonna, since that's me, I'm gonna use tip number two. 
And what we're gonna do is instead of starting in the middle like we always do, I'm gonna have you do two dots sort of side by side and then teardrop around that all the way down to the dot that was below it. And then we're going to go back in and um, put a dot at the top. So I'm gonna use, I use tip two to go around, so I'm gonna use tip three to put my dot up here. It's gonna give it a little bit more of a, not shockingly, a pointed look. So what am I saying? I'm saying I'm putting one dot on either side of the top here, and then tear dropping down, dot, dot, dot. And then I'm coming back with my one size larger tip and putting a big dot up here. Now for the moment, what I did was I skipped the one where I don't have a lot of room because I like to, I always do the hardest one last because by then I've had the most practice. So that's sort of the safest way to go. Okay. So now I'm running into the two where I don't have a lot of space, but I do have enough space to do this, and so I'm going to. But I'm just gonna do it. I'm glad that I did the other ones first, so I have a better feel for it. And I'm just gonna use a tip two at the top because of my lack of room. Whoops, what happened? How did the video end? Oh, it didn't end, right? No, that's funny. Why does it say it ended? I hope it didn't end. Hmm, this one. Can I order it online? Yes, you can order this one, Iris, no problem. Um, gosh, guys, I hope this didn't just end. So, well, there's no point in chatting about it. I'm going to keep going and hope that it's fine. Otherwise, I'll have to redo it. Um, anyway, so let me get finished with this because we are actually almost at the end. The good news is also, well, if you're listening to me, then it didn't end. So after this step, We're going to um, just double dot the large ones, the large dark green ones that we did. We're gonna use the off white and we're gonna use tip number six on those. Okay. Never had the video just go right off on me like that. So we'll see what happens. And then we're gonna work on the corners. Now the good news is that um, the sheet that I gave you that has the photo on it actually has the written instructions for the corners because if you wanna do the side of your box, um, you're gonna need, you know, you can't do it all at once because it has to dry. So I'm gonna go get my bottom of my box so I can demo that for you. So we're gonna do the top of the box together and then you can do the, the sides of the box on your own if you want to. You know, if you wanna do this part, you know, do something on the box. I did each of the corners on mine. So let's see if anybody else had a comment. Nope, I have to get up now since my iPad said we're done. All right, so what you're gonna do then is you're going to use tip eight and we're gonna use the dark blue color. So the largest tip and we're gonna put a dot in the corner. You know, don't do it so close to the corner that you risk going off, but do it pretty close to the corner because we're actually, you know, da da, trying to mark the corners. Okay, so those four, and then we're gonna do, we're gonna basically um, extend that. We're gonna go down and do tip six, the same color, then tip four, then tip two. So we're then gonna go down to tip six with the same color and put one on each side. That was not big enough. Uh, 
Okay, so that's, I did tip six. And then I'm gonna go down to tip four and do the same thing next to it. And then, now this is short, you can then do tip two also. You do not have to. If you like that look, the way it looks now, you don't have to make it longer. I'm just telling you. This is not a requirement. Okay. One of the things I love about this box project is the fact that it's, um, so elegant and you can, you know, it's great for, like, if you're making these, or thinking of giving these as holiday gifts, this is a really sweet thing to give. You can even, you know, put something inside of it, I suppose. <laughs> that would be nice. All right, so when you've done, when you're done with that, then what we're going to do is to tape tip four and the off white, and we're gonna put like the two dots beneath, in or inside, I guess might be a better use, better word, um, inside the large, Dot. So what I mean by that is I'm going to come in here okay and just do this inside each in in here. That's what I'm trying to say just to kind of extend the design a little bit. All right. Okay. So then after we do that one, we're gonna tape take tip three and that light blue. And we're just gonna put one dot beneath it in the center, okay? Now again, look at your own design. If you don't have room for this, it's not essential. You just wanna do the same thing on all of them. And basically then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some double dotting on top of what we just did. So we're gonna use tip six and that bright blue, okay? And we're gonna do that on the big corner dot. And these are clearly gonna be wet. This, when you do this on your sides, you know, remember you're gonna stand your sides up. So you're really only gonna be able to do one side at a time. Let it dry, then go on to the next side. So that'll take you a little while. All right. And then on your, on the ones to the, Next to that, we'll go down to um, tip. I actually just use tip two. Well, you could use tip four next, of course, sorry. Tip four and that first color, the jade green for your size six dots. All right, and then on the next one, I used uh, tip two with the dark teal green, and it's up to you. I just usually do the next dot. I don't do the last dot because it's so small, but you can if you want to. I like how I say that, like I'm giving you permission, but in reality, a, as you know, and B, as I know you know, because I see all your plates come back to the studio for firing. You often do what you want, which is perfect. I love it. That's how it should be. And then we're also going to do that teal <coughs> also with tip two on the uh, little dots in, uh, below, if you want to. If you can handle the fact that they might then look like eyeballs to you. 
So now that I said it, you can't get it out of your head. But that's basically how I finish off the design. And then what I can do, what you can do is, um, I don't think I have the picture of it here, do I? Let me take a look. What I did on the one, um, I'm just gonna move this to the side because I think you've seen what you need to see there for the moment, is I did the, the corner design on this bottom corner. I don't have the bottom with me of the finished one. So I would do these two and then let it dry. And that, you know, takes a little bit. And then it just has to be set and then you could do the other side. But here's the important thing. You now have to walk away and let those two sides dry completely unless you're really good and want to hold it. But you obviously can't put it down until side the opposite side is completely dry. So not that, you know, I guess you probably figured that out. And then what I wanted to show, the last thing I was like to show you is how to clean up your messes. If you have two dots that kind of loved each other, um, you can go, I know I had one, here it is. Once they're dry, you can go back and take a, I have a paintbrush that has a chiseled end, but you could use anything with a sharp point and just draw a line in between and then blow. Yeah, you don't wanna do this with that wet paint. 